Hello and welcome to this video on RM study. In the last module, we talked about documenting the results of the monitor and control risk process. In this session, we'll discuss the techniques, examples, and templates for the monitor and control risk process. Let's get started. First is the Reese knee analysis. This is an analytical technique used to establish a reserve for schedule duration, budget, estimated costs, etc. for a project. It's helpful to track the risk expenditure and release contingency amounts as risk expire. Next, we have status review meetings. These meetings stress that all project reviews must include risks as agenda items and must address or assess certain factors, such as changes, if any, to the highest priority risks of the current period actions taken on occurrence of risks or trigger conditions, the effectiveness of the implemented risk responses for the last period or the need for additional risk response actions, impacts, if any, of the closed risks on the plans, and lessons that need to be added to the organization process assets. The third technique is risk audits. Risk audits are conducted to verify whether all the risk management rules are being implemented as specified and whether they are adequate for project control. The fourth technique that we have to discuss is risk reassessment. Risk reassessment will enable a risk owner to evaluate the risk assigned to him in terms of risk analysis and mitigation processes. Project risks must be reassessed whenever a new risk is identified during project execution or when there is need to analyze a complex change request or during the phase and review, etc. The diagram given here will explain the practice standards for project risk management better. The next technique is called variance analysis. Variance analysis determines whether a risk process is effective by setting thresholds for actions using earned value analysis formula. And finally, we have trend analysis. This is used to assess whether an implemented risk response action is bearing the desired results, whether additional actions are required, and how the risk profile is changing. This was a short outline of the techniques, examples, and templates for the monitor and control risk process. In the next and final module, we'll review the terms and concepts used in this chapter. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.